So now I got a million dollars on the street. I got my cocaine business. I got all my businesses going. So I wanted to get made and straighten my crew up. And I ended up going to Philadelphia. And that's right, my Jory Molino. Yeah. And, you know, to go back into it a little bit as well, I mean, after you, uh, before you even met, you know, in the book, you had talked about, you know, getting involved with the Philly guys and stuff. I mean, you almost had a potential opportunity. You know, you were trying to get involved with the Gambinos as well with, uh, you know, you had a, someone go between to talk to Pete Gotti. So what was that about? Well, I had a friend, Jerry Cormat from Rhode Island. And uh, when Frankie went away, uh, uh, Louis Baby Shanks took over. Baby Shanks took over the family. Mm -hmm. And uh, he wasn't too crazy about him. So he had associates in the Gambino family, Angel Emilio, Frank Giggsy. So he set them up to me. The Frenchman sent them to me. I met them. And they went on my behalf, well, uh, Giggsy did, to talk to uh, Pete the Nose Gaudi. You know, but really there was nothing Pete could do because there was already a sitting family in Boston. So you don't want to get involved with that, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's why I ended up going to Philadelphia. But it wasn't yeah. my idea to go to New York. You know, that was Jerry and, you know, they put that in my head. And if it worked, it would have been okay. You know, don't get me wrong. But uh, I'm glad I went down to Philly and met those guys down there. So what was that like when you went to uh, Philly and getting how, how did you get your in with? I mean, because Ralph Natalia, Natalia, they say, how, how did you get involved with? Uh, well, the guy that I, uh, my friend Frank Rossi, uh, the time with Ralph. And he kept telling me, because Frankie was in my crew, he kept telling me, come on, let's go meet Ralph. Let's go meet Ralph. So finally we took a ride down there, met Ralph. I really liked Ralph. We had a good talk. Um, started going back down again. Eventually I went over and I met uh, Donna Delaware. I met Georgie Bergese, some of his guys, and eventually met Joey and the rest of the crew. And they liked me. They took me in. You and know, at first they thought when I came down, I was already straight and out. Because they heard things about me in Boston, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all a wire. Everybody through prisons, whatever. And uh, then I explained why I was there. So immediately, uh, I got proposed in the family. And I think it was like six months later, I got straightened off after oh. that. Yeah, and I mean, you couldn't, I mean, you had to continuously have meetings with them before you even became. Oh, yeah, they were the family. Family. Yes, exactly. So, I mean, you, you really had to kind of. Prove yourself, you'd say, that they, they, they knew that you were legitimate. I mean, because they continuously, oh, yeah. in the yeah. book, you talk about them having to meet you, go party with them, you you buying drinks and stuff with them, and just, you know, yeah. Yeah. buttering them up to let you in, right? <laughs> well, no, you know, you stop breaking bread with people. That's how you get to know them, you mm -hmm. know, hanging out with them. They're really a good bunch of guys. I still got a lot of respect to the guys down there, you know. And... uh they took to me, I took to them, and they took me in the family, mm -hmm. you know. And so when they accepted you in, how long did it take for you to become a made guy? Total, it was about a year I was around them. But after I was supposed, about six months. Mm -hmm. about six so, months. so, I mean, they, they knew that you were ambitious to become a capo? They, oh, they knew what I wanted to do. They were behind me with that. Uh, the deal was I was going to stay with the family for a few years and then break off. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. You but, were going to uh, stay just with to them? get me, like, you know, just to get me, uh, give me a footing, you know? Mm -hmm. But that never ended up happening, obviously. I went away, and I, I didn't want to do that anyway at the end. Yeah. I found Christ on the street, so I lost all that ambition to be uh, a boss of a family or whatever. Yeah. You know? Well, uh, it was still called the Luisi family in Boston, and I was the boss of that, but. Mm -hmm. I was under Jerry Molino. I mean, the word capo in Italian doesn't mean captain. It means boss. When you become a capo, you're right under the boss, the other boss, and the consigliere. At any time, any capo could step up in the family and become a boss of the family, you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. any had a yeah. position. Yeah. Well, with, uh, can you walk us through that ceremony when they made you? And, you know, who were some of the guys that were there? I really don't like to do that. Uh, it, it's still hard for me to do that, to be honest with you. It's oh, still, okay. Even though what I did, it feels like I'm a train. But there was about a dozen of us in the room. Mm -hmm. You know, Joey himself pricked my finger, did the ceremony with me personally. 
as everybody stood around. And uh, it was it was it was something. It was really something. You yeah. know, um, I had to swear that by that knife and gun, I would protect anybody in the family. You know, you go through that whole ritual. And uh, it was something to be made. To be, yeah. it was an honor to, you know, in my mindset at that time, I thought it was a great thing. You know, now I don't, obviously. <laughs> yeah. You know? Well, I'm, I mean, so you worked your way up after becoming a, a made guy. You became a capo. Yep. How did you approach becoming the capo? I mean, did you let them know, hey, did, like. Oh, when I went there? down, they had found out about me, you know, through the grapevine, what I was doing, what I had up there. They were visiting back and forth. They were actually talking to the Petriaca guys that they knew, you know, and uh, a lot of them were working with me already. And they knew right away what I wanted to do. I mean, it wasn't a secret. And, uh, you know, Joey, we had a meeting in uh, South Philly. Uh, one of the Patriarchs came down to the meetings with, with me, and they told him that they were going to straighten me out, make me a capo in the family. He wanted that message to go. He wanted that message to go back up to Boston, true, to Patriarcha. Mm -hmm. Guy that came down with me. I don't want to mention his name. And uh, that's how the word got back. So they again, they didn't have no problem with you being involved with drugs. They said. That they oh, oh, you mean the Philly family? Yeah, what drugs? He, well, um, Georgia Begazer was the li liaison between Boston and Philly. Mm -hmm. So I, I do a lot of things with Georgia. He'd go back and forth, whatever, you know. And uh, they kept telling me they, don't, they knew I was a big drug dealer. They wanted me to stop. Georgia really wanted me to stop selling drugs. And I was really wanted to do that for a while. And you know, we were really slowing down with it. You know, until something happened and it got brought back up again in Philly and ended up sitting with a rat and FBI agent. So how long did that last before you got set up? I would say that investigation, I don't know, went off for six months, nine months, maybe tops with me. And it took them a while to get into me. Then once I, I started talking with them and, you know. I put the nail in the coffin for me. That was it. Hey, thanks for watching this clip. This clip came from one of my interviews I did in the past. Please hit subscribe if you want to get more clips like this. Also, if you want to watch the full interview, I'll put a link in the description. Or you can hit the button on the screen to watch the full interview.